Hey, what's up everybody? Wes here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Quirky Universal Toilet Repair, as well as how to take your dated handle from this look to this, and just an easy step. So here's a good example of an outdated toilet system with the balloon float. Here is the updated system we'll be installing, and to get this, we're just going to jump over to Lowe's. Here is the Corky Complete Repair Kit, fixes leaks, noisy toilets, um, among other issues. I'm also going to recommend that you get an extra set of universal tank bolts, mostly just for the additional rubber washer, and I'll show you why later in the video. And as one extra step, right beside these same supplies, you'll find these extra oil rubbed bronze Corky levers. I'm going to be installing one of these just for looks purposes. It's not required. I'm also going to be installing a new water supply line. Um, this step is also not required, but the original builder at my house put a 16 inch line in, which was way too big and it was unnecessary. So I'm going to drop it down to a 12 inch and just have the safe peace of mind knowing that I've got a new supply line in place. You just want to make sure it's got the rubber grommet on this side as well as the connection side. If it does, you're good to go. Now back at the house, here's a good look at that oversized supply line that I mentioned. Um, it can cause some issues. Right here you can see that it's actually caused the water supply to sit at an angle. I don't know if that can be fixed, but either way, first step is going to be to shut that line off. Um, turn it so there's no water coming into the, to the toilet itself and then flush everything. And you must also want to hold it. Just make sure you can get as much of this water out as possible. Once you have the water out, it's a good idea to throw down a dry towel because you're going to get some water on the floor. Now that your towel is in place, just reach up to your supply line and spin it and to loosen it. And it should be only hand tightened. Uh, you may need a crescent wrench to loosen it, but likely you can just do this by hand. Um, note there is going to be some additional water that's going to spill out, um, hence the towel that we put down earlier. Now that we've got the top disconnected, we we'll want to disconnect it from the supply feed. Um, this is a 3 8 compression, or you can just use any adjustable wrench. It shouldn't be very tight either. Just give it a quick loosen and then you should be able to spin the rest of it off with your fingers. There's going to be a little additional water in this supply line as well. So again, just keep a towel handy. Now that our old supply line is out of the way, we'll go ahead and dry everything up and take our brand new line and just reconnect it starting with the bottom. Um, just basically stick everything on there. You can use some plumber's tape, but it's not necessary. Just get everything finger tight and then get a pair of pliers or your 3 8 wrench and get it snug, not over tight. Now on the underside of each of the bowl, on the left and the right, you'll have these um, tank to bowl connectors. These have wing nuts. Um, some have uh, 13 millimeter nuts, but you'll just want to get these disconnected on both sides. And we'll go to the other side here and get our other wing nut off. Once this is removed, um, whether you have the wing nut or the bolt, we'll be able to lift the tank up off of the toilet. And what I generally recommend is just to go ahead and open up your shower. And once you lift your tank up, just go ahead and set it directly in the shower because there will be a little uh, leftover water inside there that you'll be able to pour out and you're not going to cause any additional mess. Now, once the water's out, I recommend just laying a towel down. That way you can set your tank sideways on your shower and have a stable place to work from. And what we're going to start off here is to take our 13 millimeter wrench and loosen the tank bolts. You should just be able to get the, the tension broken with the wrench and then everything else should spin off pretty easily with your fingers. So what we'll do is go ahead and get these nuts off and get both sides removed. These old rubber washers seem to be stuck in place, but they'll fall away. We can pull those off later. What we'll want to do is pull off our old sponge gasket and we can throw this away. There's a new one in the kit. And just as a heads up, later we're going to show you how to remove this bigger plastic nut here because if you don't have a special tool or a wrench that's going to fit that, you're going to need another way and I'll show you how. So next up, we're going to go ahead and remove the same kind of little nut from this fill valve. You should just be able to give it a spin with your wrench and then you'll move it, remove it by hand as well. And when you look inside the tank, here's that fill valve that you just released. I'm going to just pull it out with the, the float and all this is getting replaced. We'll go ahead and pull our tank bolts out that we pushed in earlier. And now if you're upgrading your handle, like I'm going to do in this video, you'll want to go ahead and remove your old one. Just spin this lock nut off and everything is still connected to the flapper um, as far as the chain. So what you'll do is just go ahead and remove that hook um, from that chain and you should be able to pull everything through the slot. If you're not replacing your handle, leave all this in place. Just disconnect the chain because you'll be using yours later. But in this case, we're just going to toss it aside. 
So now I'm going to show you guys a simple trick to get this larger nut removed without having to have the special tool. So what I've done is pulled out the drill with a 3 8 inch butterfly bit. You could use any thicker drill bit, but what I'm going to do effectively is just put the drill here, drill a hole through it, and get everything broken off. We're not going to need these parts, so we just need to go ahead and get it busted free. Once we've cracked through, avoiding the tank, just drill a simple hole, and then that should release the tension where you can reach in and get everything spun off um, from the inside very easily. So there's that nut, and here's the part we took out. Okay, so now that all of our old parts are removed, we're going to get open up the new Quirky kit, and here's everything that it comes with. The first part that we're going to need is our flush valve, and we're going to go ahead and remove this plastic washer and the chipboard washer. Don't lose that. And we're just going to come in the inside of the tank, push it back through, and then making sure that we have the chipboard washer in place, we'll just hand tighten this. Don't over tighten it because we may need to move it a little bit later. Next up is our fill valve. You'll just want to pull that out of your kit. And it also comes with a nut that's going to secure it. And you'll notice on one side of this, it says this side up. So take note of that. And then we're going to do the same thing as we did with the flusher valve. We'll just come in from the inside of the tank. Make sure it's lined up. And make sure this is facing the right side. Get it hand tightened. And we'll move on. Now it's time to install our tank bolts. So you'll just want to take one of your tank bolts, likely the one that came with the kit, Use the washer that came with the kit and push it up to the top of the bolt. And what we're going to do is come in from the inside of this tank, just like we have been doing. My flush valve is in the way just a little bit, so just kind of loosen that up. Get it to where you can get your bolt started. And then we'll get everything pushed through. And what I'm going to do now is add an additional washer. The kit comes with one extra, but that's why I mentioned to get the extra tank bolt kit. So you'll have additional washers if needed. Um, they don't specify doing this necessarily in the instructions, but this is also going to be something that helps to waterproof your tank. But just slide another washer over that and then take one of your nuts. It's a 13 millimeter. Once you've got it hand tightened, you can just snug it up just enough to where you can get some good tension, but don't over tighten it to where you're going to crack the bowl. And then once you get that one side set up, we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. That's going to make sure that everything's nice and waterproof. So now we've got these both tightened. The other two are just kind of hand tightened and here's a good look at how we have everything stacked up and then we have one washer inside the bowl as well so we're not gonna have to worry about any leaks so now i've got everything laid on the floor you can see everything's just kind of loose and in place where we can move it what we're gonna go ahead what we're gonna do is go ahead and attach this fill line right here and now that it's in place um, we'll go ahead and eventually we're going to stick it in the flush valve but you'll notice here this flush valve comes up and down um, this is going to be your fine tuning adjustment once we get everything in place depending on what your water level needs to be in your tank you can see a water line here that's likely where i'm going to have this positioned but then you just want to get everything tightened up you can spin it put it in place and then we'll go ahead and put our line right into that hole and then we're good to go to the next step but just as a side note in the kit they do offer a clip it comes with it where you clip it right here and you'd put the line through the clip and it's supposed to secure it to it, but it works just as easy just to drop it in here like that. Now that we have everything in place, we'll turn our refill adjuster here clockwise. It goes about a half of a turn, and that's going to allow everything to open up on that side once we let the water in. And the last thing we need to do before we put everything back onto the tank itself is to get our sponge gasket in place. So it's going to basically stick on right here and once it's seated it's going to be in this position so now make sure everything um, before you put your tank down is good and hand tight and then take your sponge gasket and just press it right over here everything should click right into place and once it's fitting good and sitting snugly you'll just go ahead and take your tank and set it right onto the bolt now that we have our bowl in place you're going to want to take one of the washers and the 13 millimeter nut that came with your kit and go ahead and stack the washer right on top is the easiest way I've found. Line it up and then get everything started with your fingers. Everything should line up, get a finger tight, and then you're going to want to go ahead and just kind of hand tighten it to where you can get the bowl balanced and then move to the other side. Here's a good look at that sponge gasket in between. Once you get everything finger tight, you'll notice that the bowl still has a little bit of a wobble to it, so be careful when it's in this state. What you're going to want to do is come back with your 13 millimeter wrench and evenly tighten both sides until it sits snugly. 
Now we're going to take our braided supply line and just hand tighten everything onto the fill valve portion. It should just thread on there nice and easy and just go ahead and get it hand tight. You don't have to worry about using any special tools. Now the last thing to do is install our new oil rubbed bronze handle. Um, this is the corky version and it's very easy to set up. You'll notice a little red lynch pin here. Once you pull that out, you'll be able to disconnect the arm and then there's also going to be a connector that you'll just twist off. That's going to allow you to slide the handle in place and then just put your adjuster nut right back on. You'll just snug it down by hand and then once you've got that on there, you'll notice the handle works, which we have to put the arm back on. So we'll just slide it back on. And then once you get it in place, you'll just take your red clip and click it right back into place. Here's a close up look of that. Just slide it onto the flusher and then install the clip and that secures everything. And you can adjust it from here, which from the looks of things we're gonna need to do. And the reason I say that is because when you flush it, it looks like this arm is gonna come up above the lid. So if the lid was in place, it's gonna be hitting that. So we're gonna pull this clip back out, take the arm off and just put it down at a steeper angle and then put our clip right back in. And you'll notice now when you flush it, it's not gonna hit the lid. The only thing we're gonna have to do is shorten this chain. I already had it connected. Um, before I realize what happens, so we're just going to take a few links out and we'll be good to go. So now you can see I went ahead and took some of the links out. I still have some extra hanging on the side, but I'll need to clip that out so that it doesn't get caught under the flapper. Now we're going to turn the water back on at the supply line. Turn this very slowly. You don't just want to rush the water into it and mess up any of the parts. Just kind of ease it in until you're fully open. And once it is, you'll see everything start to, to fill up. And you may even notice, even per the instructions, you see some water coming out of the different components. Um, don't be alarmed by that. That's something that's completely normal. And I'll try to get a shot of that here. You can see some water coming out the side. That's perfectly normal. Nothing to be, to be worried about. What you really want to be worried about is making sure that there isn't any water spilling out onto the floor um, or sp spilling out from the supply lines. As long as all the water is contained in, in the toilet, you're fine. So just kind of take a look down at your tank bolts. They can leak. It looks like everything's dry on this side. Go ahead and check the other. Um, check your supply lines. Make sure there's no water coming out of the floor, out of this connection. Looks like we're good on that end. So we'll just let everything fill up and then we'll test it out. Since we're not leaking water anywhere, we'll go ahead and give it a test. So just give it a flush. Don't hold it. Just give it one click. And... So far so good, it seems like everything went properly. The water flushed, it's filling back. So yeah, all in all this has been a success. So here's our new handle, a little extra style, and the updated interior. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click like, consider subscribing, and keep in mind if you had any issues with your installation, there is a more detailed instruction booklet that comes with these kits. Um, or you can just leave a comment, send me a message below, and I'll do my best to reach out to you normally the same day and help you get everything taken care of. All right, thanks for everything. Peace, guys.